Hey guys, Henry from Adventure Air here. We're here with Alvaro and with Jimmy, two gyro CFIs, almost as good as me, but you know, whatever. So anyways, as you guys know, we did uh, rotor balancing part one, and now we're at part, uh, well, I'm not gonna call this part two, I'm gonna call it part 1.2. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jimmy and, uh, and Alvaro are working on Alvaro's machine here, balancing the prop first, as you guys remember, and then after that, they'll work on the rotor. And so I just wanted to say, woo! Exciting, I know you guys were waiting for part two. So, it is coming soon, don't worry. We will get to the rotor and you'll get to see all the secrets. As soon as the models get Most ready, we just be ready to shoot it. That's right. Yeah. And if you guys really want, I'll have these guys balance the rotor in their speedos just for a little extra entertainment. Or a speedo. <laughs> Change the whole game. Man. All right, we're gonna do it. Woo! It's a very, very important part of the initial setups of an, any aircraft. Any aircraft, if you change the propeller. It's the, we're talking about grams and microns. That, that speed with that mass changed the whole game. And low pitch and high pitch vibrations really, really affect the long-term condition of the machine. So as center as it is, as better calibrated, as better balanced it is, less vibration, less problems in the future so everything when it's running maintains the same line and it's pushing right in the middle they change the whole game and we have a wizard a balancing wizard so what's next weights not necessarily it was wobbling a little like it looked like the pitch wasn't proper oh okay like they're in and out of phase did you saw the profile when it's spinning mm -hmm. the, the shadows mm -hmm. at idle and at so that's another trick when, it's, when, when, when you look the propeller right 90 degrees, when it's spinning, you should see the, just one shadow, the exact shadow of the profile. If you see a little bit of distortion, when you, when you see it, you see a little bit of distortion or it's opening like a small shadow or like an off focus, that's when one of your blades are not, it's just a little bit. And these little bits make a huge difference when you're flying. That one I got was right at 18. So you achieve the center, the zero from the hop, and then you go to a precise point in the blade. So all the measures from each blade are in the same position. And even a little bit of, just, just we're talking about point something, it will create vibration. And those vibrations in the future can alter the, the good behavior of the machine. I 
don't know how. This one's showing me 19.2. One of them showed me 18. That'll be a big difference. I think that's the vibration that we're having. Yeah. It's off. Good amount. I don't know. 18.8, yeah, it's a little high. Uh, let me get all the little tools out. So a lot of times people just go and balance it, but then you find out the blades are out of phase, they're not pitched the same. And that could cause, that could fix your imbalance right there. Sometimes people add things like safety wire to the bolts that hold your propeller on. How much wire are they using exactly the same? That throws it off. Some people forget a washer, that throws it off. This thing has to be balanced. A gram. A gram can make the whole difference. Mm -hmm. How much was it on the Papa Golf when we did it? It was like a thin washer that made a difference on it, on that hub. Yeah, something like that. We went around for quite a bit to figure it out. But uh, it was the blue ELA that used to be here. That thing was so out of balance because the spinner cone had been repaired. There was a huge patch of fiberglass on one side of it and it threw it threw it off by one and a quarter inch per second. So it was moving one in 1.25 inches per second in space every time it was spinning off. And that threw the whole thing off. And once we got that dialed in, there was no rotor balance necessary because it wasn't the rotor, it was the propeller. So again, starting at the bottom up, getting the propeller in balance. All your control surfaces tightened down proper. And then rotor balance if necessary. The rotors come from the manufacturer statically balanced really, really well. But tolerances on different aircraft, a dynamic balance is always gonna make a big difference. But most of the time we do all this, we go fly, we don't even touch the rotor. Take that off. Is the pre-rotator stuff gonna go all wobbly and floppy? If so, we can put the bolts back in. So they don't hit. But basically, to secure it. But I want to pull the propeller off and run it. And if it runs similar, I mean, obviously it's not gonna have that tension on it. But you'll still be able to detect a something on there because the motor moves quite a bit. But the propeller can do that too. Let me uh, physically try to move the motor with the prop. Oh yeah, it moved a lot. A lot, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. So they started putting a brake on the bottom. That helps a lot, but it moves. Shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can move the whole motor. I don't know that it's a propeller fixing too much. <clears throat> because nothing's consistent with the changes we're making. <laughs> In terms of balance. for sure. Yeah. And it was out of balance, don't get me wrong. Crap. No, the prop was out of balance, but right now it's balanced. And we're having the... What are you doing right there? So it's showing me that the heaviest spot is at 225 degrees. If this is 360, our north, the heaviest spot is here but it's rotating in this direction. So due to gyroscopic precession, yeah, the weight is felt 90 degrees later. If I push here, you're actually gonna feel it 90 degrees later in the direction of travel. So if it's showing me the, the heaviest point is here, 90 degrees before that is where the actual weight is. So what I'm doing is looking at 180 degrees from that to put a heavy weight because if this is the heavy spot, we wanna put a weight opposite here to balance it. So what I'm doing is looking at the 225, Minusing about 90 degrees and going directly across, that's where we want to put our weight so that 90 degrees later, it actually balances that out. 
and then what I'll do is I'll tell the machine that I put it, and this is a first best guess type thing. I'll make a change and then I'll tell the machine that I've made said change and it'll say based off of that change, here's the next change to make because it'll tell the difference in a balance. So even though the heaviest spot is here, we're gonna put a weight here because it's actually 90 degrees before that. Confused? Clear as mud? <laughs> Perfect. You can put the man with the lady with a lot of equations around. Yeah. <laughs> but if you watch the video. As back, soon as he starts talking. It, it'll make sense if you think about the gyroscopic precession. So just looking at four to you know, four different spots, you know, 360, 270, 180, and 90. If the heaviest spot on here right now is showing here, it's actually here because 90 degrees of precession with gyroscopic precession. So the machine's telling us it's here. You don't want to put a weight up here because it'll throw it out of balance. So look at 90 degrees before, you actually want to put the weight here so when it is felt 90 degrees later, it will balance out where it's showing us the heavy spot. So, so I guess guys that do uh, wheel balancing at tire shops probably understand this a lot better. Same kind of theory, yeah. Exactly the same, the same stuff. It's the same theory. We're only running off one axis right now. So we have the sensor pointing directly through the center of the propeller. So any kind of vibration is gonna be felt in that direction. It's not moving this way, but it can tell the accelerometer what's going on. So that's how it's measuring its stuff right now. When you have the sensor right here. Right, directly in line with the propeller. We have the tachometer here, which sees the laser reflective energy and it gets attacked each time. So our north, our zero degree reference point is this little sticker. That's why I did it just for my reference. We have it mounted here, so I'm not gonna look at it sideways and try to figure out degrees. I put it to the sky, that's 360. Easy to think, or less thinking, I should say. So I'm gonna try to throw some weight on this and see what kind of results we get, and then we'll run it up, right up. Two. Now we're going for three. That got it better. So you added washers to those two bolts right there? I did, and they slightly improved. But what we're thinking is we took the propeller apart, we weighed each blade, we got them statically identical down to the gram, and then we're trying to balance it right now but we think the machine was following the last 100 hours with a pretty poorly balanced propeller and it's worn out the motor mounts. I can wiggle the engine pretty easily by hand with minimal force. So I don't know that it's actually the propeller that's out of balance, but just the motor mounts are loose themselves. There's they're signs of them cracking and they're worn. They could just be shot. They're really soft. You know, they heat, they cool down. Like anything else, rubber breaks down. But if the machine was flown with a badly balanced propeller for the last hundred hours, those motor mounts have been doing a lot of work to keep it steady and anything's gonna wear out. I believe that's where we're at. You try to I bet if I took the propeller off and rotated it 90 degrees, where we would get these measurements would also change 90 degrees. It should. But it's not necessarily getting that much closer. We've already got enough weight on there. It shouldn't be that out of balance do believe it's the motor mount, so we're gonna try tightening them up, snugging it to see if we can reduce the amount of shake, and then we'll have to replace them eventually. But if we secure the engine, the engine's not shaking the way it is right now, then it should, uh, it should improve. I don't necessarily think it's out of balance, just the engine shaking. So what we'll do right now is we'll go over to another aircraft with the same kind of engine. Um, I'm gonna show you an example of this one wiggling, and then the other one, not wiggling, just to give a comparison of what the motor should look like. Let's go. All right. So this one, very little weight. I'm just gonna pick up on it. You can see it moving. I give it a pretty good amount. I can wiggle the whole motor. 
back and forth, independent of the body. Okay. Now we'll go check out another one and see how much that one wiggles or doesn't wiggle. Let's compare. All right, so here we are with the properly mounted engine with good motor mounts that are known. So minimal effort, decent amount of effort. Okay, and then back to forth. The motor is not moving independent of the aircraft. You can see it. The other one wiggles. This one, that's how it should be. I believe that's going to be our problem. So you take the prop off me or what? I want to, but but right now we can tell that the motor mounts are very soft. The whole motor is shaking when we move the prop, it's too soft. I think and it's they just need to be replaced overall. The prop was out of balance. We did balance it. The blades weighed different weights, and we got that all correct. But you're not going to need this much weight on a propeller to balance it. And we put this much weight on there in multiple locations, and we were getting the same spot on the uh, sensor showing it was out of balance. That tells us it's not an imbalance of the propeller. There's something else going on. So we grabbed the motor, wiggled it around. The motor's wiggling quite a bit. So our influence out here isn't having much change, but the engine's just shaking in the bay by itself. So now that we've identified that problem, we have to resolve it. Then we'll go and check the propeller balance later on. But for right now, all we can do is let the engine cool down, see if we got some motor mounts. We're gonna try them uh, today. Maybe come back, order a new set, and replace them all. They're not easy to get to, and they're even harder when it's blazing hot. So for right now, we'll let the machine cool down. We got another guy coming in, wants to get a prop balance. We'll see what's going on with that. He takes pretty good care of his machine. He did some adjustments for three years. He flew with that prop, saw a couple dings, did some repairs, repainted it, smoothed it out. He got it pretty close, but it still needs a dynamic balance. You know, he added paint, uh, cut the leading edge, did different things, maintenance after a couple years or 300 hours, whatever it was. And he's just got a slight vibration that's there, um, more noticeable. So we'll dynamically balance his today. Should be easy, that's the key word. We'll find out. So again, stay tuned. All right, here we are with a different aircraft. Um, the other one, we still got some issues to work out. We're gonna look at the motor mounts, a little wiggly, but we got it better. We got all the blades pitched proper all the stuff we're supposed to do for balancing. It just wasn't making sense. So at the end of the day, kind of took a step back, took the thing all apart, statically balanced it, put it all back together. It's still not making sense. So we go look a little closer at the engine. We noticed the motor mounts are a little old, little worn, and the engine is quite shaky, as you saw previously, shaking the two different kinds, what it should be and what it is. So for right now, we're gonna take a pause on that aircraft, we'll get it mechanically sound, and then we'll come back, check the balance, and get her dialed in just right. For this aircraft right now, uh, we got the owner here with us. His name's Dave Bacon. I'll let you introduce the uh, aircraft. I got my Sportcopter uh, M2 here with the uh, for the Viking 110 on there. Going to get the prop balance today. Yep. So, what's the reason for the prop balance? What was the uh, cause or need or? It's just, it's that just got a little vibration. I think it's. I can, if I can make it better, I will. Yep. So. 300 hours you put on it, and you went back, resurfaced it, cleaned up the propeller, pitched it all within a 0.3 degrees, and it's got a slight vibration to it. So, you know, like anything, it's gonna wear out. The leading edge flying through atmospheric conditions, water, sand, all that stuff tears I'm it up over I'm this thing off field all the time, so I'm, I put some rocks through it. Right, so he went through and he got it all surfaced and, you know, painted and smoothed out and everything, but did you use an extra gram of you know paint here and there? It's impossible to tell. So the purpose today, we're gonna go through it and dynamically balance it on the aircraft and get it dialed in. And just a side note, the whole reason to balance your propeller, if the aircraft is shaking the entire thing from it, one, it's fatiguing on the actual pilot, but two, all the copper wires flexing over time, they're gonna end up breaking, motor mounts are gonna fail, the actual crankshaft of the engine, none of those vibrations are good. Gearboxes, so all that stuff. The smoother you can get it, the smoother it's gonna fly, the happier you're gonna be in the long term, less problems down the road. So we're gonna check this thing, see where it's at, and then we'll make a weight change, and we'll keep measuring it, weight change, weight change, and we'll get the thing dialed in. So follow along, let's do it.
How bad is it? Oh, 0.05, it's not bad at all. <laughs> I can get it closer, maybe, but it's pretty much <laughs> almost the best you're gonna get. Um, let me look at our reference up here. That B0, so looking at it from here. Ooh, uh, let's see where we can get the weight. It says it's here, 22, 44 degrees. Spinning left. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Spinning this way? No, it's spinning this way. Oh, it is spinning this way. Okay. So then, 90 degrees off, straight across. Or, yeah. Right there, 90 off. That way. Gonna wash it right there? And I was gonna call this one. It's spinning this way, so one, two, three. That's how I'm numbering them. Okay. So we'll try and wait on that spot right there, number three. Yeah, and there's only one prop that has this on it, so. Perfect, that's the one I put a sticker on, just that's happened it. to be. How does the, the wind affect our testing on this? Like it, we, hit, we moved it into a headwind now? Uh-huh, if it's into the wind, it's good. If it's a side wind or a reverse wind, it shakes the aircraft. So we did initial run, we got, uh, 0.05 inches per second. And with the propeller, if you can get the inches per second to 0 0.10, so a tenth of an inch and below, pretty good. But we got the thing all rigged up right now, ready to balance. We got a 0 0.05. We'll try to get it down to a 0 0.00, no, no movement in space. And we're gonna do that by throwing a weight on there and seeing what change it makes. If we can get anything better than a 0 0.05, we've done a good job. Clear prop. Starting point, check the next one. It says. How long did it take you to figure out how to use this thing? A long time. A very, very long Hooking time. Hooking it up is easy, is easy part, huh? Kind of. Uh, I didn't hook it up right the first time, a couple times. I just put the box on the gearbox, and then I read later that the X has to intersect the middle of the prop. So here's the propeller. And I'd mount the box, just, eh, whatever. I didn't right. realize it had to be intersecting the middle oh, of the propeller. Right, right, right. the results off quite a bit. Nothing made sense. Wait, now. That one made it work. 0.08. Uh oh. It was better with the one on there, so that way we know. It doesn't just get better each time. <laughs> That's good, we made a big enough grab the wrong one. So. But, okay. grab. <coughs> big enough change, wrong direction. So. 
what just happened? So we added we uh, we added a washer to this one part of the prop, and it got better. So we added a second one, and it got worse. It's actually the worst one we had. So we're gonna go back to that single washer since that was our best, and then we're going to move the weight to another site and see if we can get it better. We got plenty of those. So I'm taking the one weight off since it was best with just one at this site. And then I will throw a weight next to it, see if it improves or not. But we know so far with just this one weight, we got it down to a 0.04. Uh, started out at a 0.06, and now this makes it a 0.04. So we're talking hundreds, two hundredths of an inch better, which <clears throat> is an improvement. It was pretty good to start. It was already pretty good to start. All right, we made another change. So we did a baseline, made a change. Second change was the worst one. Third change, so four runs we've done. What do you think we're at? 101? 0 .01. Yep, that's the best you're gonna get. And I took we, multiple. We can get zero zero, I think. <laughs> Maybe if we freaking put a little piece of tape on it or something, or shave a washer down with some sandpaper. So you got two washers on the same one you started on? No, next to each other. So those two on that one blade each have a washer. So, uh, look, that doesn't make much sense. So looking at this from a big picture, we started out here with a 0 0.05 inch per second average. Um, you can, we take multiple points on there and it averages out to the best one. We got a 0 0.05, 0 0.06, 0 0.0 blah, blah, and then it basically takes 15, point 15 points it'll measure and average out at that exact moment and give you a spectrum analysis to see the vibration and all that. We choose the best average for each run that we've done. And the very last run we did, we got a 0 0.01 all three averages, which tells us that's basically 45 points that it just measured how about a one on the inside right here? What? Uh, it's probably not going to make it any better. You know, you think we're guess best we're going to get? Mm-hmm. I think if we waited an hour and ran it up again, we might get a zero zero. We might get a zero two. Depending upon the blade, it's carbon loading, unloading, heat, cold, all that stuff. Okay. And as it settles in, but we ran it up a handful of times now. A point zero one, we could probably clean the blades and get a different reading. I mean, that's literally the difference of a bug at this point. And I got oil on here. And oil on there. All right, I'm, I'm happy. That's... It started out good and it got better, I like it. Yeah, I, that's all we can do. Like I told you, we started out at a 0 .10 on the blue Cavalon out here and we got it to a zero zero. But if I would have taken a measurement the next day, how well did you clean the blades? Zero one. Good enough? <laughs> that's perfect. The machine even says, and I quote, extremely good. Not just good, extremely good. Yeah, let's cut this shit off so I can get out of here then. Yeah, and look at the uh, spectrum analysis if you wanted to see. You can see where the vibrations occur at every inch per second. So you can yeah, determine. I don't like I'm gonna understand it. Look at them. Basically, we can see when it's rotor RPM, it should right. be in the 350, 400 range. Right, 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 right. Propeller, if it's 2000 or 1500, whatever the RPMs are. Okay. Or we can determine if it's body shape. So we can, we can see a bias. Basically, when I was balancing that one, I was getting propeller balance, but I was getting body shape balance as well. So I was like, nothing's consistent with balancing right now. There's something else. And we went and grabbed the motor and I was like, well, Well, that tail bouncing around like that too. That's gotta throw shit into the that. The motor right? itself is doing this in right. space the whole time. The motor mounts are just gone. So propeller, no propeller, it's just gonna jump all over the place. So when he puts harder rubber in there, it's gonna make it vibrate more. No, it'll hold the motor still. So that's, the balance isn't with the uh, propeller itself. It's just the motor running. Once it starts doing something like this, it's just gonna perpetuate. It's horizontally opposed for balance and everything, but just the initial blah, 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 blah. It's just nonstop shaking, rattling around in there, essentially. All right, let me save all this good shit. All right, guys, so I hope you learned a little bit more about rotor balancing here. Uh, of course, uh, Mr. Fabulous, Mr. Dave Bacon here, brought his uh, gyro in first to balance that one as well. We went from a 0 .04 down to a 0 .01. 0 .01, right? 0 .01. Woo! That's, that's pretty damn close. By the way, this is the proper way to uh, eat a donut. What are you doing eating donuts? <laughs> what are you doing eating donuts? <laughs> the proper pie, each donut, right here. <laughs>
It's for ballast. All right. Jimmy, you have anything to say about rotor balancing? We got it down to a 0 0.01 uh, of the rotor. So we got the propeller taken care of. We're not getting any better right now. If we clean the blades, it might change a little bit, but a 0 0.01, so uh, one thousandth of an inch per second in space, it's the difference between the wind, a bug, something like that. But that'll give us a good baseline. So now when he goes to fly the aircraft, if he feels a little bit of stick shake, it could be something else. It could be a rotor imbalance, the cord, the span, the blade tracking, it could be dirty blades. I can see some dirt on them. It's got dirt on them. You yeah. clean the blades, they might fly smooth. So we'll have you clean them before you go and then fly home and tell us how it flew. Sounds good. Now that we know it's not the propeller, we can start looking at other things if we have a little bit of an imbalance or stick shake or body shake. I got some bugs on the way up here. I flew through Guaranteed. Home. Yeah. You get a bug blade. One you're seeing the matching bugs on the other blade. Yeah, it's, that's, that's the hard part. Good. That's the hard part. When you're in flight, you just got to toss a cup of paint up into the rotor <laughs> and let it sling out like those old tie-dye shirts. I wonder what that shirts. would do. It would That'd balance it. Yeah, like yeah, a tie-dye shirt. Some, some, do some uh, awesome little uh, paint job on there. It might. Yeah. It might. I guess. So, anyway, guys, if you have a comment about anything that we do or a question for any of these guys, uh, leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our page. And um, anyway, for the happy, happy crew here, we will see ya. Adios.